Have you ever wanted to make a Metro Matoran, but give it a more poseable head? No? Just me? Well, that's too bad, because that's what this video is about, but we're actually also going to take a look at how to attach Generation 2 masks to your McDonald's Matoran. It's very simple, it's a very niche video, I know, but I hope you'll stick with me for this one, and if you do like this content, hey, make sure you subscribe. We're that much closer to 3,000, just a little over 100 away, we can get there. So, without further ado, let me go ahead and show you the Metro Matoran, and yes, I am going to be showcasing a lot of bootleg pieces here. I do apologize for that. It's actually not because I wanted to humble brag or anything, but rather because I already had the torso and the mask on the desk in front of me, and these four legs were sitting on the table. So it was kind of perfect. Plus, I'm using all of my Mata Blue Borok feet right now, so these were the only ones I had available. Whatever. <laughs> That's what influenced my decision. But with that said, you can treat it as a humble brag if you want to. No big deal. The way that this works is fairly simple. You turn a gear on the back of the body here and he tells you no. He tells you he doesn't want to go to the store, mom. But I think it's even better because it's a very, very simple build. So this is just done with a gear on the back here. If we take that gear off, we have access to a three length friction pin. The same three length friction pin is used right here and directly above that connected to a pin connector. So it's a very, very straightforward build. The neck is attached directly to that, which means this whole thing can move freely separate from the gear here. We take that pin and we plug it into the body where the original uh, disc launcher used to connect, which does mean you'd have to modify the body to connect the disc launcher to the back, but that is something that's able to be done. I just didn't do it for the sake of this video because I didn't want to make it longer than it already is. That said, the assembly is very simple and it's very intuitive to use as well and easily accessible on the back here as well. So he just tells people no, it's all he knows how to say, it's all he's good for, and I quite adore him for that. With that said, though, um, back in 2014, when I was actually first taking a look at all of the leaks from the Bionicle Generation 2, I saw that Pohatu set. I knew he was like the first one I wanted to get. He was the first one that I got for G2, and I wanted him so bad because I love to see a, br uh, well, not a brand new color, but a revisit to a classic color, that dark orange again in Bionicle, and it was just a very faithful mask. So when I got my hands on it, finally, I fell in love, but unfortunately, I noticed that the way it connected meant it was not really usable with other other types of heads from Bionicle Generation 1. There are certain scenarios where you can use it, sure, but essentially for all intents and purposes, it is designed for this head. Well, what I figured out is also dead simple, just attaching a ball joint to that and giving it a pin at the base here means you can actually use that pin to connect it directly to the body. Now, if that sits a little bit too low to you, you don't really have to worry because there is a piece that can connect to this pin up here and can connect to that axle on the inside of the ball as well so you can raise the head up. But this felt the most kind of, uh, I don't know, just in proportion to me for a McDonald's Matoran and it gives you the ability to use a mask like this to sort of vary the aesthetic of your characters as well. Plus, for the most part, it does a pretty good job of covering up that ball joint when viewed from either level or above. And so that works out well. And that's most of the ways you're going to see it, but it also gives you the ability to kind of move the head around if you want to, since it is on that ball joint and it is on a friction pin as well, giving you a lot of expression out of it as well. I think this works best probably with, you know, uh, Hooky number two, I guess here, but also with the uh, black Onua mask, the red, you know, um, how, which is sitting right next to me. I don't know. Why I couldn't think of the name of it. And of course the white, uh, Akaku, right? Because those are obviously colors that were used in Generation 1. Bright green wasn't used in Generation 1, but we have slowly over time been seeing more uh, of that color appearing in things like Technic, so it's getting a, a bit more support, let's say. Also, Dark as you're kind of the same thing. Not really used in Generation 1 Bionicle, but again, we have been seeing more and more uh, support for those colors as time has gone on. So it, you, it is definitely something you can use, but if you want to use something like uh, Dark as you're for this, it might look a little off, um, but I don't think it would look bad per se. And the same is true also for that bright green. I think in most cases, the bright green would go wonderfully, in fact, with a color like this and paired with lime green. So you can even get three color you know, tricolor McDonald's Matoran out of it as well. It's really handy to know. It's very, very simple and yet effective at the same time. And I guess the last thing, thing I'll go ahead and show is an extra bonus in here uh, before in the video is how to attach things to this hand here. I do this using bushings because on one side of the bushing, it has these little uh, like teeth knocked out of it. That is so that it can actually connect to uh, studs on a plate, for example. So if I just go ahead and show this real quick, why not? 
So if I use this, it can connect directly to these plates in here. It can connect between studs. It's a pretty useful little uh, uh, thing <laughs> to just file away and have as information. But you can take that piece and sort of tilt it in there. And yeah, you can just push it into that hand. It will kind of, I don't want to say stress it. Like it's not really going to bend that apart, but it'll hold it pretty securely and it'll allow you to actually connect things to the hand of characters as well i think it works best with uh like fire characters obviously because they can carry red weapons have a red bushing so those are probably the most effective colors but you just want to do this in a way that hopefully doesn't damage the pieces so test it first if you feel like it's too stressful on the part don't do it you know uh hopefully in the future we can get our hands on some of those uh, matoran arms modified but that's going to be a project coming way later down the road. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you're having a wonderful day. If you did enjoy it, I'd really appreciate it if you left a like and subscribe. It really helps the channel out. And of course, you can check out the links in the description for Discord, Patreon, and Instagram. And let me know your thoughts in the comments. I'll see you all in the next one. Take care.